And we're back with game 13 in the best of 21 between Food Police and Fredinovich. And this game is played on Land Nomad. Um, so as we know, those players, they really like to play on Nomad. So Land Nomad is the next best thing to that. Of course, you, you again start without town center. So first you need to gather your villagers and drop down a TC. Now, however, Foop please here, uh, instead of going for the TC, he is going for the Lumber Camp. And I'm wondering if he has the resources, but no, he does have resources for a Town Center. So I wonder what his plan is here. Does he want to go for some kind of crazy douche, or what is the what is actually happening here? Because, again, uh, in the current state of the game, we have to stupid treaty mode where you cannot attack enemy villagers and you have this huge box telegraphing your position to your opponent. Now Fredini Witch on the other hand, uh, he already has placed his town center, um, although it seems like he doesn't have small trees enabled at the moment because there's a clear gap here between the town center and the wood line. But uh, yeah, now finally also Fubli is dropping down the town center. Maybe he was confused. Maybe he thought uh, that he doesn't have enough wood for the TC. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, he thinks that there is not enough wood uh, to drop a town center on land moment. And uh, I remember that used to be the case, but not for a very long time. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know. He was maybe playing this too often on Woobly back in the days. Um, so um, he didn't drop the town center, but I think it's still all good and well. Uh, he will be able to um, get uh, some food from these sheep, uh, create some villages from the town center, and then he will be able to uh, also catch up to Fredinovich. Uh, and we see that uh, the difference isn't too great, and that is simply because Fuplis is Spanish, and Spanish is one of the strongest civilizations in regular nomad, and I would argue also on land nomad because they get their town center up much quicker because their uh, builders work faster and they have also a very strong uh, castle drop um, meta game so to speak so they can drop a castle in your face and produce one of the strongest units in the game uh, with the conquistador um, on the other side, Fridinuich, he has the Mongols, and they're also a very, very strong civilization in these type of circumstances. Uh, of course, the villagers gather faster from hunt, um, so you can see that it's extra strong to gather from these deer, mm, like he does over here. And usually Mongols are able to pull off some very, very quick uh, feudal age timings, and if he can get some boars in, so there's one boar over here that he might go for. And indeed, that is what he's doing. And there's another boar here in the back. Um, and then he might be able to go very quickly to Fuel Age and then pump out some scouts. And that could be very devastating uh, to Food Please. Now, both players, of course, are scouting. We see the scouting of Food Please very nicely done. Uh, so this is something that uh, newer players really underestimate how important it is to know how the map is laid out, where the resources are and everything. Uh, Fredinovich, on the other hand, even better scouting and you can see that he kind of circles in the position where food please could be. Um, of course, he could also be down here, uh, but if he continues on with this sheep on this track, then he should be able to find food please soon. And I think that will happen here when this sheep will get caught. No, not yet. Uh, but we can just uh, yeah, stay on this fog of war and the sheep might even just see the town center. And indeed it does. Uh, so basically pretty which knows everything he needs to know. He's dropping now a mill to get some more hunt. As the Mongols, that's your top priority. Um, another thing for players new to land nomad, there's a lot of resources on this outer rim. As you can see, there's like gold, stone, gold, stone. Uh, and so if you look for extra resources, this is often a good um, place to look for. Also, there's usually some boars and some deer. Uh, so there's a lot of resources on this outer rim, but also basically everywhere. It's a resource rich map. You're not going to get starved uh, for resources here. Wood lines are also uh, nice and thick so not too much arches shenanigans over the wood line uh, to be expected 
But let's see what these players will be going for. In terms of villager numbers, uh, both are pretty even. Now, Fredinovich bringing in the second boar. He is taking the hunt over here. He will be able to take this third boar. So in terms of food, he will be in a very, very good situation. I can see him go up with like 18, 18 villagers, something like that. Uh, but maybe he also wants to go for a barracks uh, over here. Um, but I think, yeah, he should... He should maybe just go up with, uh, and that's exactly what he's doing, with 17 pop even, or 18 pop after the villager. Uh, and that is very good timing. He is prepping the barracks. Uh, he needs a little bit more on wood to be also be able to afford uh, the, uh, the stable. No, he's not going up. Uh, instead, he's creating more village, and I think that's almost a wasted opportunity here. Um, and now this is a little bit dangerous here with the... Uh, with the town center uh, that can always just shoot the boar and almost losing a villager here but nicely micro killing the villager off food please at the same time uh, killing the boar super nicely then also now on the way to feudal age with 19 villagers and we can look over to food please's point of view he is not yet up um, he has less villagers because he lost one and he's not yet up but of course also taking uh, making use of the riches of the lands with taking the deer he's getting in another boar one about to be finished over here he's probably thinking about getting another one if he sees that in the fog of war yes he does indeed or maybe he first wants to get the sheep always worth it to get these extra sheep yes your villager is idling a little bit uh, but you get free extra uh, 200 food and then this villager can just build a house to do something or uh, in, like in this case get the boar um, but food please not able to click up and we've seen this in a couple of games where if you're just l much later than your opponent in the next age uh, it's tricky and Freddy about to hit fuel age and he can drop the stable he has a lot of uh, food in the bank although he has zero on food um, also not going for gold so I, I wonder what his strategy is here um, zero on food is a little bit excessive uh, I have to imagine or I have to say uh, because yes he needs the, the, the wood for the stable but then um, he also needs some food to produce some scouts and now he's spending all of that food uh, on upgrades which are important uh, granted but uh, Yes, okay, so instead he also wants to go for archers, but then he is not on gold, so uh, also kind of questionable. Um, so it seems like he had a very good uptime, but now he doesn't have the the, the proper follow-up, the proper um, investment. And now he really should just, yeah, why not get a get a scout out? Why not, uh, why not do that? Yes, he doesn't have a, have a house, he doesn't have the top space to get the scout, but now he's Mongols, he's up early, and he has the stable, and he's only now queuing the scouts um, and so I think that's a little bit of a lost opportunity I think he also should have scouted a little bit more just to uh, to find more resources you know they're all along the edge of the map so you know there's pretty high chance that there's something here uh, or even here I mean um, yes you tend to forget and uh, certainly I am no one to criticize him because he by this point is just a better player than I am but uh, at the same time it's just something you have to think about in this situation. Also, he is now idling his town center and while going for the scouts is very important, uh, you need a certain number, uh, you also don't want to idle your town center because that just gives your opponent time to uh, boom ahead and time to get more an advantage over you. Uh, one thing that these, these nomad stars uh, typically have is um, it's difficult to raid your opponent with scouts and that is because everything can be underneath the town center like you see here and uh, yeah basically these mm -hmm. villagers are untouchable there's nothing that uh, that Freddy will be able to achieve here and the sneaky villagers over here he doesn't see and food place is even walling them and what we talked about in the beginning um, which is the castle drop is seemingly being prepared here by food please who while he took his sweet time to go up to the next age he is now able to go up to the castle age in no time although he's lacking a little bit of uh, food but i think 
uh, he can just uh, make that happen with the market and that's exactly what he does. Now we have these scouts, they're late, um, they should have been a little bit earlier but even then not too much to be achieved here. Uh, I think yes, even the archery range would have been better, you could have just sit uh, your archers over here and just be pesky and annoying and deny some farms uh, or even the tower rush uh, at this point could have been a good idea. Uh, and now we have the spearmen and the spearmen are not going to do much. I think uh, it's pretty clear what Fulpis wants to do. He wants to go for a castle drop. He wants to be uh, the one who is putting a castle into the face of Redini, which maybe in the front here on this hill. Uh, although that's a little bit too far away, maybe. I think he will just go for one that's right into the face of Redini, which, and then he can pump out uh, Conquistadors. And Conquistadors, as I said, one of the strongest, if not the strongest unit in Castle Age. They're a gunpowder unit, uh, they have a lot of attack, they have great mobility, and they're just overall very strong. Now we see a little tower war uh, being prepared here, but Rupi's just having more villages forward, pretty really under committing here, and uh, so I think this tower war will be easily won by Fuplis. However, one positive that this has is that uh, Fuplis now has less stone to build his castle, um, so he needs more time to uh, really go for the stone. And again, the scouts, uh, he should try to, to really look all around the map, maybe split them up, uh, see where Fuplis is, because there must be, must be somewhere, uh, because this is, this is just, this is just nothing. There must be some stray villages. Uh, and we of course know that there are stray villages over here. We're about to uh, mine out the stone mine and then they will be exposed. And that would be a very nice pickup uh, for uh, Redinuich. So I think if he scouts uh, around and sees this, um, this should be very good. But he, I think he should just split it up. Just two scouts are enough to pick a stray villager here or there. Um, now Fuplis in the meantime has reached Castle Age. He is just executing these fast castle builds. Uh, yes, he had a messy start, he was a little bit behind in, in, in feudal age timing, but in the end, Brittany, which wasn't able to make something happen, and now Fuplis is in the castle age, um, and yeah, and Fred tries to pick off a villager, but they're all basically very high HP, so he can be a little bit annoying, but in the end he won't achieve too much. Uh, and yes, um, now before uh, going for the castle, because he doesn't have the stone, Fupli is just uh, relying on the good old reliable knights and uh, that will be a disaster here for Virginia, which he has these exposed villages over here, everything is exposed, there is no walls, he has some walls in the front, which is nice, but then he should also think about completing the walls, maybe making this big wall, um, or at least some smaller walls towards his town center. Um, I also question the position of this lumber camp, like, why are you not doing the lumber camp right next to your TC, at least then your villages have some backup to run to, so this is, uh, this is interesting, uh, to say the least. Now these villagers, they need to go back, uh, they have collected some more hunt, so that's very nice, and now we see that there is a hole, there's always a hole in the wall, but uh, Freddy of course now realizing this and plugging the hole, and now we see again, <laughs> it's almost like a iconic matchup in uh, this series, uh, knights against scouts without upgrades, and we all know how this goes, uh, and all the scouts will just get mopped up here, two already dying, and as, uh, as I said, we should just split up his units, uh, try to make use of the scouts while he can, and yeah, food please now has enough for the castle drop, and I think that's what he will be going for, we see some panic walls going down here pretty now also reaching the castle age so uh Fupti is also a little bit slow i think that was due to his start um but these villagers they're like they want to die they're like okay we want to chop this so that the knights can get in uh but Freddy, uh being the micro god that he is he realized this and immediately pulled the villagers to chop on this side and now we see the castle as we expected on the front and there's nothing that Freddy can do to stop this. Mm. However, this castle, due to the wall, is maybe not the most consequential uh, castle of all time. So, 
Uh, I think Freddy still has a good chance. Um, he maybe needs to do some walling behind uh, towards his town and maybe keep his gold safe at least. Uh, although when the Conquistadors comes out, come out, then it's going to be really, really tough. Uh, now the castle is down and uh, villages will fall, at least one villager will fall. Uh, and now we see a pesky tower being dropped here in addition. Um, but overall, maybe not too consequential again. And we have some camels here for Freddy Newich. He is the Mongols. Mongols can produce camels. Uh, but underneath the, uh, the castle fire, the camels don't do much. And now again, the scouts are being wasted here. Uh, Freddy should just really put the gather point somewhere else. Um, the camels just go here and then they get shot immediately by the town center. Uh, and still, it's not enough camels. We need more of them. We always need more camels, of course, uh, because we all love camels. Uh, but yeah, now Freniewicz has a second down set where he is really calm. He is trying to execute this uh, as he can and just boom it out, win it out, boom it out. Uh, he has the first Conquistador out, second one out, and you can see the stats on this unit. 16 attack uh, in Castle Age with a ranged attack. They have armor uh, with bloodlines, they have a lot of HP. So this is a crazy, crazy unit, and uh, yeah, two camels and, and the spearmen are not gonna cut it. They're not even gonna cut it against the knights. Uh, so Freddy just needs to be patient, needs to be defensive here. Uh, he needs another stable somewhere, somewhere over here maybe, uh, and then he needs access to gold. Uh, and so I think the only option, while well, these uh, villagers have finally chopped through, they're like, okay, we, we really want to chop through this. Uh, maybe these villagers can get some sneaky gold somewhere, or even a sneaky town center, because Food Police is all focused on attacking here. He he is sure he has this in the bag. Mm. Knowing Food Please, he has this mindset of like, haha, I gotcha, I got the castle drop, I have the conquistador spam, uh, you have nothing on me. Um, and <laughs> indeed, even in villager numbers, Britain which has nothing on Food Please. Now, one recent change that was made is that um, uh, the, the skirmishes do a lot of bonus damage, or do bonus damage against the Conquistadors, which I think was not always the case, uh, and that makes it uh, so that you can actually deal with Conquistadors, because there used to be a time where it was almost impossible, very, very tricky to deal with Conquistadors, but now with the skirmishes, as you can see, uh, it's rather easy to take them down if you have just enough of them. Of course, skirmishes have uh, the conquistadors have so much attack that they also can just punch through the skirmishes uh, as well. Meanwhile, food please only on a one TC, but uh, that is enough as he's still ahead in population by quite a big margin. And here is uh, here is what's uh, what's happening is what we discussed is that these villages to, that were chopping through the wood line here they can actually get some sneaky gold on the side because the main gold of Freddy has been denied. Uh, but also there's the secondary gold that's been taken by Freddy Newich. So overall, um, he has resources, uh, although his base is messy, his food eco is a little bit messy, uh, but overall he is not out of this game yet. Uh, and at the same time, he is raiding food please, so that's very, very nicely done, but those are just camels and they will all just die within seconds to the town center fire and the spearmen. And they're all dead, but at least he killed some villagers there. Mm. <laughs> and, of course, as I said, I have to point this out, the food police economy strikes again, although just a little bit. Um, but now we're just waiting for uh, the next wave, the next punch in the food police playbook, which is adding siege behind, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's not going for anything fancy, he's just uh, pumping out battering rams, and that's exactly what he needs. Those are also a perfect counter to the skirmishes, because skirmishes uh, will attack the battering ram and will just one um, uh, damage per hit and so that's a good way to counter this and now we're getting a scary amount of conquistadors we're getting mangonel that will attack the town center we have the battering ram uh, killing this archer range and now finally we have a defensive castle for Fredini which but I think it's a little bit too defensive even I think I would have maybe even love to, to see him delete the, the blacksmith and place it a little bit further forward uh, because there's no breathing room for Freddy, which is no space at all. And I think he just needs to 
uh, drop two town centers down here and just uh, distract food please and just try to boom back into this game because Brady is just not able to get the, the village in numbers that he needs and you can see the conquistadors roaming around but of course the skirmishes as we said are a counter nowadays to the conquistador although they're now in so high in numbers that it's gonna be tricky and we're gonna see some slaughtering here of Brady's villagers and it really doesn't look good uh, Freddy in these last two games just didn't look prepared, didn't look very sharp. Um, and yes, Fuplis is losing a lot of the Conquistadors. They are expensive, but he can afford that. And Freddy will lose even more villagers in return. And meanwhile, Mangonels are here. They kill the town center. And uh, honestly, at this point, Fuplis may be even thinking about going to Imperial Age at some point. Uh, because or just going for a lot of rams, but with Imperial Age he would have this in the back for sure. Uh, but it seems like he wants to go the Castle Age route, he wants to go uh, for a couple of rams, a couple more knights, a couple more conquistadors maybe, um, and then just break this position of Freddy New Witch, which is not the strongest. Uh, he just has a couple of skirmishes, and of course uh, Mangonel is also good against uh, the skirmishes and now we see another stable being dropped here by Fredini Witch but it's like super far forward that will just be be battered down by Fuplis' siege and here we can see that this cast a little bit further forward would have been good uh, that he would have a little bit more breathing room and conquistadors are just being parked here they will probably just come right back around and hit the wood line and hit the gold again uh, if who please decides to do that. I think meanwhile he is occupied with his uh, economy. So he has second town center very nicely done here. Has a lot of farms and still two food please economy villagers, uh, but otherwise not too much actually. Um, and Fupli is such a strong player, even if he doesn't have an economy, so if he has an economy, it's really, really terrifying. And look at the army numbers here, 22 military to 7. Uh, I think we all know where this is, game is going, and uh, yeah, no attempt by Fredini Witch to really make something happen. He should like just sneaky reboom on the sides. There are so many resources on the side of Land Nomad, uh, so maybe that's something... They could have saved him, but I think it's all but too late now. All the bloodlines finally coming in, which will also give the conquistadors more hit points. And um, yeah, we're just waiting for the final push. Whoopi's just building up the numbers. Uh, he is just patient at this point. He knows he got this in the back. Freddy has nothing. I mean, he has no resources. He's just producing some camels. Now getting a second town center up. He's now trying to raid again with camels, but camels are just not a good raiding unit, especially if they don't even have an attack upgrade. And uh, so I think this will not amount to much, especially since, since look at this, everything is still covered kind of by the town center and this tower. So it's super difficult to raid uh, on these maps if you have a good location for your town center. And now we have the mangonels rolling in. Uh, just completely alone, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I think Fuplis can just afford this. He's being, he's attacking with the villagers, and I think all the the mangonels will just go down. But uh, honestly, at this point, it doesn't matter. Um, this mangonel will also fall, but the knights will clean up the camels in the end, or at least try to. And we have the rams coming in, and I think all the villagers need to be pulled. They need to be manually tasked to attack the rams here while at the same time some need to garrison the town center too so that the town center can actually shoot and then some need to repair the castle uh, but I think it's just it's just too many it's just too many and uh, I expect the GG to be called soon and the only thing he has is a couple of skirmishes and there is the GG and what a textbook execution here by food please we can quickly look at the timeline I mean well, not quite textbook. I mean, let's uh, let's not forget about the the start with the lumber camp. Um, but yeah, Freddy wasn't able to make something happen. He was very early in feudal age, uh, but then he kind of fumbled. He first dropped the stable, then dropped the archery range, then didn't uh, produce scouts, then didn't produce villagers, and then he wasn't able to make anything happen with uh, the scouts. 
and then from here on out where Fuprice uh, was in Castle Age pumping out the knights, it was just a downhill battle for Ferdinuich. And um, yeah, I think he's just sometimes too indecisive, he just needs to decide on going for something and then just stick with it. Uh, but in this game it was not the case, so this one goes to Food Please, uh, who is on a winning streak, it seems. Um, yeah, so not much to see in terms of the stat, very one-sided in the end, uh, although, as I said, Freddy had some good moments, had a good uh, uh, good plan initially with the Mongols going up early, but I think better would have been just towers or um, the archers just to try to hit something. Uh, but overall, you also know that with the Spanish, the castle is coming. Um, and even if you delay your opponent, the, the castle is coming and then the conquistadors are coming. So you need to be ready for that. Uh, all right, guys. So this was game 13. And I hope you're as excited as I am for game 14.